Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, before we start, uh, first, I uh, want to, as we did last night, acknowledge that we had a, another tragic incident of violence in Baltimore, and we're going to address that uh, as, we, as we know we were with you guys in questions. Uh, but uh, we'll get back to that in a second, but wanted to uplift that and know that we had another uh, tragic life loss here in our city. Uh, good morning. Uh, and thank you all for being here. I first want to uh, start off by recognizing members of the team that are here. Our city administrator, Chris Shorter, uh, Deputy Mayor uh, Faith Leach, Deputy Mayor Ted Carter, uh, Commissioner Harrison, Director Jackson, Chief Ford, Chief Wallace, and our Deputy City Solicitor, Ebony Thompson. Uh, when Deputy Mayor uh, for Public Safety, uh, Sonny Schnitzer, who we all miss, even though I know she's watching and I talk to her all the time, uh, left to join the DOJ in February. It created a vacancy in a key position in our administration. Uh, we then embarked on an intense and highly selective process to identify our next uh, deputy mayor. I made it clear uh, that I wanted it uh, to be someone with a proven track record on public safety and a deep knowledge of our city uh, to fill this critical role. And today, after months of deliberation, uh, considering a number of high qualified candidates, I am uh, excited to announce that we have found that person. I have selected Mr. Anthony Barksdale to serve as our new Deputy Mayor for Public Safety. As a native Baltimorean, a public safety expert, and longtime uh, proponent of proactive uh, and constitutional law enforcement, uh, Tony is one of the smartest and most knowledgeable crime fighting professionals that we can bring to the table. Uh, the only uh, thing uh, that I uh, don't like about Tony is his choice of high school. Uh, Deputy Mayor Barksdale uh, rose up through the ranks at BPD uh, to become uh, Deputy Commissioner of Operations and Interim Commissioner under Mayor Rollins Blake and comes with a deep understanding of the unique challenges uh, we face in Baltimore when it comes to public safety. He knows what it uh, takes to make Baltimore a safer place for our residents. During his tenure at BPD, as you all know, homicides and, and violent crime both saw substantial drops. In 2011, uh, Baltimore had uh, fewer than 200 homicides for the first time in over 30 years. Equally as important, he knows that zero tolerance and stop and frisk policies of the past won't produce uh, sustainable outcomes for all Baltimoreans. Like me, he understands the importance of implementing the consent decree, that prevention and apprehension are two sides of the same coin, and that the trust of our communities is vital to our efforts to build public safety in Baltimore. Tony knows that a comprehensive approach to violence is the only way uh, that we're gonna be able to achieve our shared vision for Baltimore. And I'm certain uh, that he will act with urgency and leverage his expertise to get the job done in partnership with our already fabulous public safety leadership here in Baltimore. Because Baltimoreans deserve nothing less than us assembling the best possible team for Baltimore. And thank you. And now I would like to turn it over to uh, Deputy Mayor Barksdale for a few words. Sir, thank you. Good morning, everyone. First off, I want to say that this is great to be back serving Baltimore, serving the citizens. Uh, when I left the police department a decade ago, I felt that there was unfinished business. And thankfully for Mayor Scott, I have an opportunity to address that issue. I took this job because as a son of Baltimore, I care about our city and I know that we are more than just the challenges we face. Baltimoreans deserve a city that they can feel safe in, a city where our young people, our businesses, and our communities can thrive. I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly believe in the mayor's vision for a holistic approach to public safety that balances proactive, constitutional policing with proven violence, intervention, reentry, and prevention strategies. I understand that we cannot go back to the failed zero tolerance policies of the past. The community's trust, the community trust is crucial to the effectiveness of our law enforcement personnel and that the best way forward is in alignment 
with the consent decree. However, I understand the urgency that our residents feel to tamp down on violent crime and protect our communities. And I plan on leveraging my experience and hitting the ground running to fulfill the mayor's vision for a safer, better Baltimore in partnership with Commissioner Harrison, Director Jackson, Chief Ford, and Chief Wallace. Because together, I know we can make Baltimore a safer place for all. Thank you again, Mayor Scott, for this opportunity. I can't wait to see what the future holds. And while I'm here, while I'm speaking, I owe someone an apology for past statements. And I'm man enough to say, I am sorry, Commissioner Harrison, if I said anything in the past that is offensive to you. I want to work with you. I know we're going to work great together. And I want to move forward, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Tony, and I too am excited about what the future holds for Baltimore with the team uh, that we've ascended. Uh, before we take question, I, I just want to address uh, what happened uh, yesterday at Conway and Light. Uh, the Baltimore uh, that I am uh, moving us toward is one where no one needs to stand on the corner asking for money, uh, where those uh, young people have better opportunities and uh, to support to make it unnecessary. And some would say that uh, this is as simple as clearing the corners or rounding them up or moving them along. It isn't. Uh, the impacts, uh, that impacts the same very law enforcement activity uh, that has had it and why many of those young people are on those corners in the first place. Uh, we've been addressing this issue long before yesterday and I want to be very clear about that. But I'm not here today to get caught up in the complications. I'm here to, today to say we are not going to tolerate acts of violence, regardless of who is committing them. We're going to con keep, continue to connect uh, these young people to jobs and opportunity. Today, uh, we have an event at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum where we are working to provide other opportunities uh, to young people who are squeegeeing, and we are offering today 40 city government jobs to young people who squeegee. Uh, to the young people uh, who are out on those corners, I want you to know I understand why you're out there, but we don't want you to be. I don't want you to be. I want you to take advantage of every resource that we are offering you to get off of those corners. To the motorists and all those who have been impacted otherwise, we have been and we will continue to work to keep you safe. We're going to continue to have an increase, and I highlight that word, increase presence of city officials, African American male engagement, BPD, and otherwise uh, to keep uh, those corners and everyone there and motorists safe. Uh, we have been and will continue to enforce the laws. I think it's important for us to remind everyone that yesterday, just yesterday afternoon, we made a gun arrest on that very same corner. We're going to be proactively looking for unsafe criminal activity. And if you're assaulting murderers, if you're damaging their cars, we are going to arrest you. And I'll turn it over to the police commissioner for updates on the investigation before we take open questions. Mr. PC. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Certainly we know this investigation is still ongoing. Detectives are still looking for evidence, looking for video. So we ask if anyone has any information or any video or any witness information, please come forward with that right away. Or you can do it anonymously by calling Crime Stoppers at 1-866-7-LOCKUP. Once again, we're combing through a lot of evidence right now in search of the person who shot the victim on just yesterday. And once again, the mayor's office had an entire team out there with outreach yesterday at that corner and before that we were right there making an arrest of a person with a gun. And so we are demonstrating our proactiveness in dealing with this issue. What you can look forward to going forward is, and I have given specific directives to our deputy commissioner, to make sure we create an enhanced patrol strategy that increases visibility at each of these locations where we know squeegee operates. 
we want to make sure that we are enforcing the law, making observations, certainly for anyone carrying guns, we will make that arrest immediately when we see that. Anyone committing any crimes of damage to vehicles, assaults to motorists, and any other criminal violations, we will be there to make those arrests. So when you report that to us, we will come and we will investigate, and when we have these people, we will make the arrest for crimes committed. Once again, it's an enhanced visibility there. We want to make sure we can demonstrate tomorrow and any day after the same thing we did on yesterday by making an arrest of somebody with a gun. So with that, I'll turn it back over to our mayor. Questions? Yes, Kenzie. I know that there was police, out, police activity there earlier in the day. Um, you said that you're enforcing the law, but we know this behavior itself is illegal. So why not ensure that those workers, kids, younger people are not allowed to be there in the first place? Good morning. As we evaluate, continue to evaluate, um, not only the codes uh, that are in place, all the provisions of the code, we're looking at all the regulations and utilizing all of our resources um, to make sure that if we are enforcing that it is constitutional, um, you can't have some panhandlers that where it is okay um, and then others where we are enforcing it. However, the tragic incident yesterday um, escalated far beyond the panhandling um, and it increased to the point where people are making decisions um, when they're faced with conflict to escalate that to violence and everyone here stands on that notion that that is unacceptable. However, we are continuing to evaluate all the provisions of the code and, the regu and regulations to uh, formulate guidance as well as provide advice to the mayor on the best way to proceed forward. Uh, may I ask a question of the commissioner? Um, commissioner Harrison, Deputy Mayor Barksdale has been critical of BPD Executive Command. We, we just heard of him apologize here and, and give you a handshake. But what, what about from you? Um, do you think you'll be able to work together? I can work with anybody. I can work with everybody. That's what real leadership is. This is about me focusing on the job I'm hired to do. I will continue to do that job as I have always done. I have been given strict assurances by the mayor that the deputy mayor is here to support. And I am, I alone am the commissioner and I alone make the day-to-day -day decisions for the Baltimore Police Department. And once again, the mayor has given me strict assurances that that will continue. My job now and every day is what it has always been, to only focus on the job that I'm doing. In the past, Mr. Barksdale has also been uh, critical of the consent decree. Um, does that give you any concerns as you are attempting to move forward while implementing that to the city? No, and I think, uh, Emily, uh, I think that uh, Tony's been very clear uh, that he supports the consent decree. Uh, you can go back and see his testimony at uh, the, what we know as the DTF task force where he talks about uh, the need for constitution policing and, and highlights the fact that uh, reducing violence in Baltimore and implementing the consent decree can be done at the same time. And Tony, I don't know if you want to address that as well, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was an outsider looking in when I made prior comments. You have to understand, I come from a time where we went under 200 homicides. And I get upset when I see the pain and suffering in Baltimore. So I acted irrationally, and I'm man enough to apologize to the commissioner, to anyone else that I may have offended. But I want to be here, and I wouldn't have come back if I didn't want to work for Mayor Scott, be with this team, and that team includes Commissioner Harrison, and he just laid it out to you. He's the commissioner, not me. I love that uniform, but I'm never going back to it. Mayor Scott has blessed me with this opportunity. He has set the rules that I'm going to follow, and I don't know some of you, but I march to the orders that are given to me. Mayor Scott, City Administrator Shorter, they have laid it out for me, and that's what I'm going to follow. But like Commissioner Harrison says he has a job to do, I have a job to do, and I'm going to support him. So the division, it's not going to happen. I'm with him. He's with me. We're with them. 
and that's the way it is. As far as the consent decree, I have made numerous statements, and I also, if, if we look at it, I applauded uh, changes made to how the consent decree is being implemented in the future. So, yes? Sorry, go, go right ahead, ahead. sorry. No, <laughs> I, I don't know you or the mayor or anyone can answer. How do you define success when it comes to outreach for squeegee workers? I'll start and then I'll, I'll turn to Deputy Mayor Leach. Uh, when you're talking about uh, this outreach, right, you have to think about uh, like uh, the difference. Every young person that's out there or even adult that's out there, right, squeegeeing or otherwise, uh, folks who are of in vulnerable positions, whether they're homeless, when you are meeting, doing this intense outreach that our folks do from African American engagement and uh, from uh, the Mayor's Office of Homeless Services, every single person is different, right? And what that success looks like is, are you able to get that particular individual needs uh, that they need to be in a better place? That's what success looks like. Are you getting them higher? Are they staying higher? Are you getting them re-enrolled in school? Are you finding them housing, right? All of these factors that lead into these things. And I'll let Deputy Mayor Leach go into in depth about the things that we have been doing. This isn't new. The success we've had and how we're looking to expand that work. All right, good morning everyone. And thank you so much for asking that question about how we define success. Um, before we get into specific sp success metrics, I do wanna acknowledge the staff from the Mayor's Office of African Amer American Male Engagement. They are out on those corners every single day. They are out, th out there on those corners every single day, doing the hard work to connect our young people to opportunity. Um, this work is significant and the work that we have done is significant. I also wanna acknowledge the partners from the business community, community leaders that have stepped up to the plate and that have been working with us to connect young people to opportunities. So I wanna talk a little bit about what we've done to date and what we will continue to do, which is the work. We, have, um, we are out on corners connecting one by one with young people who squeegee. We're working with them to develop personal growth plans. We're connecting them to credible mentors and making sure that they can access the resources that they need in order to connect with sustainable employment opportunities. So um, today the mayor talked about the event at Reginald F. Lewis Museum. We were actually at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum yesterday. We had a job readiness event to get young people ready for the event that we were having today where we have DPW, DOT, DGS, other city government partners who are on site ready to make job offers today so that young people can start a job readiness event, uh, excuse me, a job readiness um, training next week and then start employment with city government agencies. The mayor actually shared this event on social media and so it shows is a testimony to the work that's been already happening as it relates to our young people that squeegee um, a few months ago the mayor released his 90-day squeegee action plan and I'm sure there are lots of folks who wants to who want to know what happened to that plan what happened what were the results from that plan well let me tell you we've been able to connect 42 let me repeat, 42 young people to employment opportunities um, through various organizations. We talked about Canopy when we first launched the event um, and the plan. We also connected young people who are currently employed at Revival Hotel, Amazon, the Department of Public Works. These are all partners who stepped up to hire those young people. In addition, um, some of you may know about our, um, our squeegee core during the, uh, during the CIAA um, tournament. So we actually hired 24 young people. They supplemented the Downtown Partnerships Clean Core um, and they provided services throughout the CIAA, 24 young people. And through that model, we actually paid those young people every day. So we were piloting this idea of a same day work, same day pay model. Um, and we saw some really amazing results from that work. So again, you know, this is a difficult moment for all of us um, as a community, but it is going to take all of us to solve this. We all have to be disruptive and collaborative um, to really address the needs of our young people. They are out on those corners because they are out there meeting many of their basic unmet needs. And so we as a community have to step up, step up and ensure that we are cultivating an environment where our young people can succeed in this city and are not forced to corners uh, to squeegee. That activity right now, we know, is illegal, though. And that's what I, Councilman Costello called on BPD leadership yesterday to offer a guarantee that these laws will be enforced because we're no, we know that this activity 
is illegal. And I understand that you said you're looking at the code, but right now it's people want to know why aren't these laws being enforced when we saw something happen like yesterday. Commissioner Harrison, can you do you have a comment? Have you spoke to the councilman about that? Can you guarantee that these laws will be enforced? Well, I, I can say right now, just as early as two hours before this tragic accident yesterday, um, those laws were being enforced. And not only was it enforced, there was an arrest made and there was a gun recovered. Um, so the police presence is there. Um, the problem is, is that this is not just panhandling. This is being escalated when we have an, a tragic event like that, where it is being escalated to now assaults. Um, and, and of course, that is not tolerated. Uh, but I will, you directed it to, to Commissioner Harrison, I'll let him speak, but I, I will st state that it is absolutely being enforced as early as 2 p.m. yesterday. Anybody else? I don't know if Commissioner Harrison could say if you know anything more about how this started, if you've been able to get a clearer picture of any threats or anything that may have been said uh, other than the basics that you were able to provide yesterday. No, there's nothing more than the basics. It's, it's not what we know, but it's what we believe, that there was some type of uh, engagement that escalated to confrontation. And from there, the victim drove through the intersection, parked, and returned with the baseball bat. Commissioner Harrison, given the fact that there was an arrest made, and then I know that the, the Office of African American Engagement came out and helped, do you think that those policies aren't enough, given the fact that a couple hours later we had a motorist killed? But that speaks to a much, much larger conversation about fixing the core root cause problem of why the young men are out there in the very first place and how to fix that. If we can fix that and solve their need to, to support themselves, to take care of their basic needs, which is what we're doing. Fixing that is the real problem and that's what we're working to do so that we can not just move them from being there but fix the reason why they think they have to be there. Right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.